The His Girl Friday podcast is brought to you in part by Messenger Fellowship, living the kingdom, fulfilling the call, proclaiming the truth. Man, it has been a soggy weekend here at the Fry household. Just checking in my rain gauge and we're just shy of three inches over the past 36 hours. The rain has finally let up as I cut this around 3.40 on Sunday afternoon. It's kind of crazy. We're almost at the midpoint of February. I forget each year. February only has 28 days, 29 on leap. So we're talking about small pair periods and a month that just zooms on by faster than you think. Now, usually on Sunday afternoons, I keep that time period open for the all-important Sabbath day nap. If you're a pastor or minister out there, you know the sanctity of this time frame. But lately, it's just been difficult trying to wind down, whether at night or in the middle of the day. So I figured I'd make use of the time by lending a quick life update. Now, with these life updates, I try to keep them shorter than my normal podcasts. And I suppose the main reason is I have a tendency to ramble and get off track on rabbit trails. And so keeping it short and sweet and concise really helps me out. But going back to my restlessness, I think part of it is tied to just this new season where everything just seems fresh but also foreign. Yes, it's a time of rest, but it's also a time of exploration. And some of this even ties into last week or last Sunday, I should say, uh, a Sunday in which Alyssa and I got to officially pass the baton off to the new youth leaders at the Gates Community Church. It was a very sweet time. It was a very humbling time, and I think it was really important for the church and the youth and their parents to witness something that hasn't happened in the Gates history, and that is having two youth couples present at the same time to conclude one season and initiate the other. So I guess since that Sunday in the past week, it's just felt a little weird because now there's closure, but now there's this overwhelming sense of now what? And I think many of you out there listening to this can relate to that sense of, okay, what's next, Lord? I am completely at your disposal. Lord, lead me. And We want the direction sometimes more than the intimacy that is required to know that direction, if that makes sense. So I guess you could say I found myself at a crossroads, at an intersection, and I really want to commit to a certain direction, but I just don't know. And it's not easy for me being idle, even if that is stop, and even if there's no one behind me, you just get so used to moving after a while, it just feels awkward. So I guess, long story short, I feel awkward as I'm recording this audio. Of course, there are silver linings embedded in seasons like this. Over the past couple of weeks, Liz and I have been attending different churches around the area, just seeing what God is doing in different bodies. We're not looking to find a new home church per se, but we're just curious. You know, we finally have this release in ministry for for a time. It's not going to last forever, but for most of 2018, we feel like we need to lay ministry down. So it's opened the door for us to Again, see what God is doing outside of the main body we've been a part of for so long. And by the way, I should mention that my dad and I are partnering on a special course being offered at the gate every other Wednesday for the next few months. It's called Commission You. If you go to our website, www.hisgirlfriday.com, you'll note that we have a Commission You page now up that really has nothing on it yet. It's kind of one of those uh, stay tuned for more information type things. The podcast page right next to it is uh, up and running, and this will be going up on that page shortly. But this course, we've opened it up to not only gate members, but also community members, bivocational leaders, marketplace ministers who want to grow in their influence, uh, mature in their leadership, This course really goes beyond the John Maxwell type stuff and digs deeper into combining original design and intent with how we're to function within our influence. It's not just a class on how to be a leader. It takes into account that we were all made to lead through our influence. And by influence, I'm talking about being a kingdom agent 
in a compromised and fallen system. For those of you who believe in Christ, no matter what your skill set is, you have the opportunity to partner with God in being on his rescue mission team. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. That's just something to keep an eye out, or rather an ear out, for in the coming weeks and months. For now, I just want to recap a certain story that happened to me at work a few weeks ago and just put it out there since I know some of you can relate, but also to encourage some of you who may be feeling overwhelmed um, just by the drama and the daily grind. So there was a point where I received an email. It wasn't directed to me from this particular disgruntled employee, but it was I was part of a mass email where I was on a CC line with about five other individuals, and the majority of them were superiors, those who were high up um, on the authority ladder. And let's just say that there are certain people who will use email as a power play tool. How many of you in the in a workplace setting have received an email and it just the amount of people on it it was just too much. There are certain conflicts and small fires that could be put out on in one to one correspondence, but no, some people. I guess they just need to make it known right away and go against the Matthew 18 way of doing things. And long story short, this email was directly related to a simple data entry copy and paste error on my part. And this email did speak in generic terms, provided some benefit of the doubt, which I appreciated. However, this disgruntled employee didn't realize that the one of the leaders on the email uh, sat right across from me and he initiated a phone call with one of the higher ups and it was about me. I could hear my name literally being mentioned and let's just say it didn't put me in a favorable light. So while the email was broad and didn't single me out, the phone call did. And this wasn't to my immediate supervisor. This wasn't even someone on my team. This was someone who was in a different section, yet some someone who had been there for decades and let's just say hasn't taken the chance to get to know me and has based his perception of me on assumption and non-truths. Now, there are times where we catch ourselves in the midst of gossip. Not that we're the ones initiating it, but were unfortunately the object of it. And this is not the first time it's happened at work, but this was one of the first times I'm actually hearing it, I'm sensing it, I'm in a position where, hey, I'm actually not assuming this. So I wasn't crushed, but like anyone with senses, my feelings were a little hurt. Thankfully, I've endured enough of these type situations in my life to know the check down in terms of response. So what do I do? Well, the superior who had received the phone call called me in and I explained the situation as best I could and just told him, hey, I'll be checking this out and seeing where the errors initiated. I then proceeded to right away drill down on several spreadsheets and check our accounting software, you know, drill down on certain vouchers uh, and ultimately discovered, yes, this was my bad. So the disgruntled employee was right in his concern. After spending 30 minutes addressing the issue, I emailed the superior with my supervisor, who was out this day, by the way, sent him an email saying, hey, I caught the error, I I fixed it, this won't happen again, and made sure that my supervisor was aware of not only what I had done to fix the problem, but also the phone call conversation I'd heard. Now, as far as that phone call conversation being made known to my immediate supervisor, I addressed that in a separate email forwarded from the disgruntled employee's initial email, just so that my supervisor had that one-on-one, hey, you don't have to take action on this. I'm simply letting you know for the record that I'm not in good standing with these two people right now. Think of that forwarded email as a problem report with the caveat of no immediate action needing to take place, at least from my side. I didn't want to blow this up into a big deal. Unfortunately, when I sent this, by that point, I was on my 
PC, and by PC I mean personal computer, which is a MacBook Air. And for those of you who are familiar with Outlook 2010 to present, operating on that platform differs between if you're on an actual PC versus a Mac. So again, the email to the superior occurred while I was at work, but my one-on-one -on -one email to my supervisor was done at home. Shortly after contacting my supervisor, I decided to go back to the initial email and forward the disgruntled employee a simple response that I should have sent while I was still at work, but just wanted to make sure while it was fresh in my mind to directly own the problem and reassure the disgruntled employee that I had taken the proper measures so that this would never happen again. The problem was that I'm more used to operating from my work PC as opposed to my personal laptop, my, my MacBook Air, I accidentally forward the correspondence from my supervisor to the disgruntled employee so he saw the one-on-one -on -one chat we had explaining how I'd overheard the phone call conversation that the, that the disgruntled employee had no idea I'd overheard. Now again, I don't want to sound like I'm blowing this out of proportion. This happens all the time everywhere across corporate America, especially at the state governmental level where you know power plays happen all the time. People are CC'd, BC'd, that shouldn't be CC'd or BC'd. And this may have come across the wrong way, but I know in my heart this was an inadvertent accident. It was kind of one of those comedy of errors where there was an initial mistake that grew into initial mistake. And connecting the two was an overreaction that wasn't my own. Thankfully, the disgruntled employee didn't seem phased by it. Kind of, In fact, he replied back, not giving any indication whatsoever that he had read the one-on-one -on -one correspondence I'd had with my supervisor. So really, this whole situation faded rather anticlimactically, if that's a word. As unfortunate and facepalm the situation may seem, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is to encourage you not to lose heart when people point the finger at you on behalf of a mistake you've made, whether justified or unjustified. One of the most powerful words of truth I've received this year has centered on not just persevering through pain or persevering through tribulation or conflict, but being thankful for it as it's happening. I think a lot of times we're thankful in retrospect and we're thankful at large for something, but being thankful in the midst of persevering through something is so foundationally key to living like Christ in the marketplace. Because I could guarantee you, if you work in the marketplace, you work in a fallen system that is compromised, that behaves and responds in fleshly terms. But you are kingdom agents. We respond on God's terms. So one of the biggest wins for me that no one's going to point out, but I know I have that peace and confidence in is. I didn't take offense to this and it allowed me to respond the right way in each separate interaction. Yes, it's unfortunate that the disgruntled employee inadvertently received the piece of the email exchange I had with my supervisor that was meant for supervisory eyes only, but I guess my humility and lack of offense showed through enough to the point the whole situation just dissipated. So for all you perfectionists out there, don't waste time beating yourself up when you make a mistake or belittling yourself because someone else may be doing it behind the scenes or in this case you catch the other side belittling you in front of your face rather choose to be thankful that the situation is unfolding the way that it is whether for bad or worse the reason why is because you have a chance to respond in the opposite spirit it's not about proving the fact that you have righteousness given to you by God. It's not proving that you're this great, awesome person who knows how to apply the truth. It's simply being grateful for the chance to let your light shine. As cliche as that sounds, it's being thankful for the opportunity to demonstrate a Christ-like quality, in this case humility, in the face of something that contrasts it. Remember, your work is your witness. And we're not perfect, and sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves to be perfect so that, again, our work can be the way that people see Christ in us. 
but that's a works mentality that we can't take into the marketplace with us. That's a legalistic mindset. We can't possibly be perfect in our work. However, we could respond perfectly. We can react and respond like Christ, whether we're catching someone not performing to proper standards or we're on the other side and we're maybe putting forth the right effort, but we're just maybe lost in a certain way. Maybe something wasn't communicated clearly to us and we're functioning under the wrong mindset. Or maybe we're in a situation where we need to give 110% and we're just in that 95 to 100 camp. The point is the amount of opportunity we have on a day-to-day basis to level up in our maturity, whether spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, yes, professionally. They are always abounding, and again, that is why we have every reason to be thankful for the opportunity to have a light that is able to shine, that we have salt that can flavor a bland, tasteless situation. So when you go back to work this week, make sure to keep your head up, because number one, you got this, and two, God has your back. Remember to die to your pride and your fear, to put on that armor, to pray that in before you go to work. Understand that because you're aiming to live as Christ, there are going to be forces of evil that seek to come against you, discourage you, rob you, disappoint you. But what you have inside you, what you've been given, is stronger than that. What abides in you, you can abide in at this moment and take it with you into your office, your cubicle, your workspace, wherever. But really, this ends the story time portion of this podcast. So I will sign off and conclude by wishing you a very happy midweek of February. It's Valentine's Day. So whether you have a special loved one, a significant other or not, uh, take time this week to marinate in the 1 Corinthians 13 love that we get to enjoy on a day-to-day basis with our ultimate Savior, the creator and source of intimacy. Speaking of significant others, I would like to point out that while the first three or four podcasts have been solo by yours truly, it is my hope to get Lissa incorporated into these podcasts more often. So once we get our office and our station set up, we hope to be collaborating on more pieces together. One of them actually is going to come in the next month where we take time to process our journey exploring other churches and seeing what God is doing and just how that is as a journey between spouses, as believers looking to reconnect and discover and sojourn the heart of God along the way. Till then, Godspeed, and I'll catch you on the fry. Peace.